Yesterday's lesson dealt with, or dealt with how to count in complex situations, how to count uh, the number of possible outcomes. Today we're going we're gonna to deal with a special type of counting tool called permutations and combinations that work uh, when groups are involved, uh, when groups of, of people or things, and you want to count how many possible groups there are, we're going to use permutations and combinations. Um, before we do this, we do have to learn a new tool, a new operation, just like the plus sign, the minus sign, the multiplication sign, the division sign, exponent square roots. Now we're talking about this, uh, this factorial. Uh, and no, this is not like a really uh, excited five. Uh, it's not five exclamation mark, this is five factorial. Basically, all this is, is you take, on the, you see the definition up here, the product of all the whole numbers from that number down to one. So it's a countdown, five times four times three times two times one. And we multiply all those numbers together. So five times four is 20. 20 times, I can do this other calculator. 20 times three is 60, 60 times two is 120, okay? Um, 8 factorial would be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, which I have noticed 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, so that I, know, I know that's 120. I know 120 times 6 is 720. So 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, 40,320. Now, you'll notice this is getting very long uh, to have to type all this in. So let's talk about a few shortcuts we can use. Uh, and you're going to really need to use these little tricks here uh, later on. Um, if I have 8 factorial over 6 factorial, a lot of people want to multiply all that out and then multiply the bottom out and then divide. But well, watch what happens. This makes this a lot easier. I have 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then on bottom, I have 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, I could absolutely multiply the top, multiply the bottom, then divide. Or I can recognize that, hey, this what's 6 divided by 6? Six? 6 divided by 6 is 1, so those cancel out. So I can cancel out as much as I possibly can leaving me with just 8 times 7. And I would even say, guys, look for, look for what's left after you cancel. Don't write all this out, okay? So I know you just wrote that in your notes, but let's write a little, little box around this says, and say, don't have to write all this. You can if you want. If it helps you, Certainly do it. Instead, if I start out with 8 factorial, 6 factorial, think to yourself in your head, okay, that means I have 8 through 1 on the top and 6 through 1 on the bottom. Well, 6 through 1 is going to cancel out, leaving me with just 8 times 7. You don't even need a calculator. You better not. You better not see any fingers moving either. 56. Okay? So the only work you have to show is this right here. What's left after I cancel? So going down here, switch colors again. I have 10 factorial over the quantity 9 minus 2 factorial. As far as order of operations are concerned, uh, parentheses still trumps this because remember, this is just repeated multiplication. So here we go. This would be 10 factorial over 7 factorial. All right, think in your head. I have 10 through 1 on the top. I have 7 through 1 on the bottom. The 7 through 1 can go away, and I'm left with 10 times 9 times 8. Don't use that calculator. 9 times 8, 72. 72 times 10, tack a 0 on, and you have 720. These problems look really complicated. They're not. So let's get into the math now of how this works, how we use these factorials to count groups. Let's say I've got a uh, let's say I've got a race going on. Okay, I have 50 motorcyclists in the race, and I want to figure out how many different ways are there for for us to go first, second, and third. How many different possibilities are there? Now, this this is going to sound a whole lot like the fundamental counting principle, but it's slightly different. 
slightly different because instead of choosing from just, uh, if I've got first, second, and third, I'm choosing three places, right? So instead of choosing just uh, three places, now I have 50 to choose from, okay? Let's simplify this a little bit. Let's kind of apply this to this, this example down here. Let's say I have, instead of five letters, five racers, okay? And I want to know how many ways are there to go first, second, and third. Well, for my first place racer, how many motorcyclists are there that could fit into first place? Well, there are five people who could finish in first. This next part's going to take a little bit of logic. For second place, okay, now if somebody finishes first, that leaves me with one less option for second. Because I can't have somebody finish first and second. The same person can't do both. And then the third place would leave three people. Okay? So when I multiply that, five times four times three, notice that kind of looks like a factorial, right? Except I lost this two, one. So five times four times three gives me 60. Okay? Um, another way to write this, notice we lost the two, one. So that's like I put a two factorial on bottom, okay? We're going to tie this all together here in a second with a formula. I want you to highlight one important thing here. For a permutation, this is what we're talking about. A permutation of things in a certain order, okay? So we're talking about the word arrangement. You're going to look for key words here for these types of problems. you see a problem in a second. Like arrangement, like order, first, second, third, something like this. Notice how closely related to the fundamental counting principle this is, except it's not quite. Because if this were fundamental counting principle, I would go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 all the way down. I'd use my entire group, not just three people out of the group. So it's, a, it's like the fundamental counting principle, except one step harder. So let's get into the formula here. Here's how we calculate this. Now, this is a lot of stuff, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna dig in here a second and, and write out what N and R mean. Basically, they're variables, okay? Take a look at our first example here. Find the number, we have Jim has six different books, okay? And he's gonna put them on a shelf, okay? Find the number of orders, let's highlight a couple words here, in which the six books, books can be arranged. So right now, we know it's going to be a certain order. So if I put book number one first, that's different than putting book number one third. So this tells me right away, these two words tells me this is a permutation. Let's talk about how to use this formula. In the formula, notice it's n, p for permutation, r, equals n factorial over n minus r factorial. n is the size of the group from which you are choosing. R is how many you are choosing. So going back to our previous example, remember we had five racers, that would be N. We had R, the number we're picking, we're picking three at a time. So that would be 5PR equals, and then I just, uh, 5P3, sorry, 5P3, and then I would just plug in everywhere I see an N, I'm going to plug 5. Everywhere I see an R, I'm going to plug 3. So this is 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. And notice how this plays out. This is 5 over 2. And then that would leave, if I cancel out the, uh, the two, 2, 1 here, 5, 4, 3. Just like we had before, 60. Okay? All right, so getting down to our example here. First thing we need to do, well, we've already done it. We need to identify whether this is a permutation or combination. We're going to get to combinations in a second. The next thing we need to do is what's N and what's R? Okay, because that's going to tell me what do I, what do I plug into my formula. Okay, N, size of the group we're choosing from. Well, he has six different groups, so I'm choosing six different things. Uh, six books can be arranged. Well, I'm taking six at a time. Okay, so this is 6P6. Six, six. Everywhere I see an N, I plug six. Everywhere I see an R, I plug six. 
So my formula here, okay, is 6 factorial over 6 minus 6 factorial. Uh-oh. We got a problem here. Can't divide by 0. Uh, go back to the first page. One important fact we need to add to our definition of factorial. I don't know if you saw this. The factorial of 0 is defined to be 1. So 0 factorial equals 1. Write that in there. Kind of like uh, anything to the 0th power equals 1, 0 factorial equals 1. Very, very important point. So when I get to this problem here, when I have 6 factorial over 0 factorial, that just means I have 6 factorial on the top, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I have 0 factorial on the bottom, okay? You can plug that in your calculator, you're going to get 720 ways. So if you have 6 books that you want to arrange uh, on a shelf, and you're going to arrange all 6 books up there, um, there are 720 ways to do that. Take a look at the second problem now. Slightly different. Now the shelf has room for only three of the books. Find the number of ways three of the six books can be arranged. So notice there's a slight difference here. N is still six. There's still six books I'm choosing from. But now I'm only choosing three books at a time. Because that's all I can fit on my shelf. So this is 6P3. Okay? So then we're going to do 6 factorial over 6 minus. So notice I took... And everywhere there was an N, I put 6. Everywhere there's an R, I put 3. This is 6 factorial over 3 factorial. Now, I've got 6 through 1 on the top, 3 through 1 on the bottom. 3 through 1 is going to cancel, leaving me with 6, 5, 4. This is 20 times 6 is 120 ways. Notice, since I'm only taking 3 at a time, I end up with less possibilities. Fewer people... To put into groups, obviously, fewer groups. Okay?